I've been invited to a collab about silhouettes. Hey, what's up you guys? For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Nick. I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for the last three years. And for those of you who are joining me for another video, thank you guys again so much. Please make sure you are subscribed. So, Tom O'Neill, who contributed this photo to the collaboration on a glass of water, and he also did a video about that glass of water shoot, and I will link that video down in the description, and I, Actually, I will link a card to that video right there, and I will link his YouTube channel down in the description. Make sure you guys go give him some love. So I'm gonna play his little challenge for you guys real quick. It's about 40 seconds long, and then we'll get into silhouette photography. So we're all uh, tired of the uh, whole lockdown thing, and, uh, and it's getting to everybody now, so I thought we could do a nice little collaboration. The uh, basic title of the uh, collaboration is Silhouettes. How you interpret that's entirely up to you. What you do with it's entirely up to you. It can be people, landscape, objects, whatever you want. Just enjoy it. Now, there's no stipulation on time. Uh, the video can be as long as you like. The uh, amount of photographs you take, however many you want. As long as it's within the theme of silhouettes. Enjoy. So the first thing I want to start with is how do you take a silhouette photo? Taking a silhouette photo is actually pretty easy. If you understand the manual mode of your camera, and I will link my whole playlist on shooting in manual mode right up there. If you understand the manual mode of your camera, metering for a silhouette photo is super, super easy. So let's take this example here. Um, as you can see, the tree line is a complete black. It's silhouetted, but you can see the outlines of the tree up against the orange sky in the background. That's actually a small town. We were on vacation in South Dakota about two years ago. We got snowed into this cabin, but I got some great shots and I had a lot of fun. But what I ended up doing is I metered my camera in long exposure with a really, 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 with a larger f-stop. I think it was f-22 so that I would capture all that light, but the details of the trees aren't there. Some of the detail is there, but it's not as detailed as it would have been in a normal landscape photo like this one. And to, to capture that, I actually metered to the light in the background, so my camera read that to be exposed properly, but the back side of the tree, the side facing the camera, is actually underexposed, and that's why they show up black. And as you can see, it's a really, really dramatic effect. It's a really beautiful effect in its own right, and it's super, super dramatic. And it's something you don't always see or you don't see very often because of that, especially in portraiture. And I'm actually gonna show a photo of Alex. And she was part of the class I took on studio photography. I took that class to learn basic, basic lighting setups for, for portrait and product photography. Part of the class was to shoot silhouettes. So we put her up on the rock and we gave her a guitar and I actually metered for the parking lot. The cars in the parking lot is actually what I metered for, so that those were exposed properly. The sun's got a little bit of a crazy glare going on right around her head, and I, and what I did is I actually angled myself so that I could get that cool halo effect around her, but if you look at her, she's not really highly detailed. She's almost completely black on that backside. That's because I was metered for the parking lot where the sun was directly shining, but her backside would come out underexposed or completely black as you see in that photo. One of the great things about silhouette photography in portrait photography is that it adds a really awesome level of drama. And again, you don't see that very often. Generally in portrait photography, you're trying to capture the essence of the person. You're trying to capture the soul and the eyes. We talk about making sure you, the eyes are the sharpest part because the eyes are the gateway into the soul. And we talk about ring light reflection on the eyes and things like that, but in silhouette photography, you want them to be black. You want anyone to be able to relate with them. That's almost how I look at silhouette photography. So like Alex standing on that rock with the guitar, anyone looking that, anyone looking at that, any viewer seeing that can put themselves in those shoes, can, can almost be a part of the photo we took because the person in the photo is almost anonymous. It's, it's a blank space for anyone to put, where they can create their own personality. Who is this person? It forces the viewer to create a story around what they're seeing. It forces the viewer to kind of create their own idea of what's going on. Um, they say a picture can tell a thousand words, but I feel like, but when you show, 
but sometimes it's what's not shown in the photo that can tell the story. So because Alex doesn't have a lot of detail and she doesn't have a lot of clarity in that, who is she? Where is she from? What is she thinking? Is she a lone musician on some journey? Is she a college student standing on a rock with a guitar? With a guitar, is she someone famous trying to get away from it all? Those are all different things that this photo can portray depending on who looks at it and who's, who's bringing that story forward behind it. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy silhouette photography so much. Silhouette photography isn't something that I have done a whole lot of as far as portrait photography is concerned, and it's something I'd really, really like to implement, especially engagement photos. When you think about how much drama this photo with Alex adds, can you only, I can only imagine the kind of drama you can add into an engagement photo. Like, let's say it's sunset, you have that perfect view. Let's, let's, let's close our eyes and imagine for a moment. You have the perfect view. Let's say we're overlooking a lake. Sunset, we're in the mountains, it's Colorado, so it's Colorado, and maybe, maybe I'll give this a try and post it on my social media, so you guys go follow me, I'll actually be up camping this weekend, so I have a really good opportunity to try this out, standing in front of the lake, or looking over a mountain valley, sunset, they're facing west, my camera is facing west, their backs are to me, they're back to the east where the shadow's gonna be. I meet her for the valley so the valley is lit up and exposed perfectly. And I take that shot and it's just a silhouette of a couple. Who are they? Where are they from? Did they just get engaged? Have they been married for decades? Are they on their first date? We don't know. We can't tell. We can't tell their ages. We can't tell anything about them. We can't tell anything about them because it's a, it's a blank canvas. We have the scenery, we have the setting, but the subject itself is blank. The subject itself is there for you to interpret. And that's the beauty of silhouette photography in fine art. It's the same with those trees that we looked at earlier, and I'll show that again. We can tell that they're pine trees. Is it summer? Is it winter? Is the full moon out? Is the full moon on the other side of them? What's going on in those trees? What mysteries do they hold? Is it an old decrepit forest? Is it a beautiful, lush forest? It's what we leave out that brings the story to our photo. It's what we leave out that draws the viewer in and forces them to put their own story on it, their own interpretation. And that's a totally different style of viewing art and creating art. It pushes our artistic creativity. So I know for a fact that the couple I'm picking to stand in front of that mountain valley this weekend, I know their story, I know who they are. I've known them for several years now. But when we do an update vlog next week sometime and I show that photo, I want you guys to comment who you think they are. I want you guys to comment what you think they're doing, who they are, where they're from, what is their story, create a story behind that image. Um, you guys will definitely comment that on my social media again. I will post my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram down below. I will post that photo as soon as it's done because I'm definitely gonna take it this weekend. And I will post it on those three accounts and I will post it on a vlog video and I want to hear what story you guys give them. I'm not going to tell you anything about them. I'm not going to give you their names, I'm not going to give you where they're from, their ages, and even where I know them from. I want you guys to tell me the story you see in that photo. And you know what, while we're at it, this picture of Alexa right here, this picture of Alex right here, give me the story that you think matches that. Who is she to you? Who is that blank space and silhouette to you? What comes to mind to you when you see that photo? So I want to thank you guys again. I know this is a little bit different than normal. This is my first This is my first collaboration that someone else approached me about, so I'm super excited to be a part of it. So please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know as soon as I upload. Again, tell me who you think oh, Alex is in this photo. What, what, what comes to your mind when you see it? But definitely make sure to tell me what you think. And if you like the video, please share it. At 500 subscribers, I am giving away a Jolly Look camera. I'm gonna snap my fingers and it's gonna appear in my hand, like so. This is the Jolly Look I will be giving away. Um, before I give it away, I will do the little repair I discussed in my Jolly Look repair video, which I put right there. I will tape the instructions, well, I will take the light metering settings onto the back of it just like I have mine set up and this will be going out to one lucky follower of my social media as soon as my YouTube hits 500 subscribers. We're at 213 as of me filming this. 
So you guys have a wonderful evening. Go check out Tom O'Neill's page, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.